Moving on now with our acetyl-CoA, we're now going to enter the mitochondrial matrix for another series of reactions. These series of reactions that take place inside the mitochondrial matrix are called the Krebs cycle. You may have previously heard the Krebs cycle referred to by other names. It can also be called the citric acid cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle, abbreviated as TCA. Those are all acceptable names for this particular pathway of chemical reactions. I am gonna to refer to it as the Krebs cycle. So what's gonna happen here is we have our acetyl-CoA carrying two carbons from our original glucose, and that acetyl-CoA is going to travel inside the mitochondria, and it is going to lose its CoA, so now we're just left with these two acetyl groups. And what's gonna happen is these two, this two carbon acetyl is gonna get added to an intermediate, a compound that's been going around the merry-go-round of the Krebs cycle called oxaloacetate or OAA. Oxaloacetate is a four carbon compound that we can see right here. So we are going to take our two carbon acetyl-CoA and add it to oxaloacetate, and that is gonna make citric acid. Citric acid is a six carbon compound. Now, what's gonna happen here, we're not gonna go through all the details of every single name, but I want you to get a, a feel for the fact that as this citric acid now goes through a series of chemical reactions, it's gonna get reshuffled in ways that allow us to, uh, to reduce NAD into NADH. So in this case here, we have our six carbon citric acid. It is going to go through a reshuffling chemical reaction that is gonna allow it to reduce an NAD to NADH, it's also gonna lose a carbon dioxide, and that is going to generate a five carbon compound. From there, that five carbon compound is gonna go through another reshuffling. In that reshuffling, we're going to reduce another NAD to NADH. We're also gonna lose another carbon dioxide. And so that is gonna leave us with a four carbon compound. This four carbon compound is gonna go through another reshuffling. And in that process of reshuffling, our, our four carbon compound is going to add a phosphate to ADP in order to generate some ATP. So we're actually um, synthesizing some energy here, synthesizing some ATP. Then that four carbon compound is gonna get reshuffled again. And in that reshuffling process, we are going to reduce an FAD to an FADH2. Now, I haven't really gone into much detail about what FAD is before, but you can think of it as another compound that can be involved in redox reactions. So we've just generated some FADH2 here from this four carbon reshuffling. And then finally, that four carbon is gonna go through its final reshuffling to get turned right back into oxaloacetate, into OAA. And in that particular reshuffling, we are again going to reduce an NAD into an NADH. We're also gonna produce some water. So that overall is the Krebs cycle. Think of this Krebs cycle as we are adding two carbons from our acetyl-CoA. Those two carbons from acetyl are adding to OAA. From there, we're just gonna take this carbon, this six carbon molecule, and it's gonna get reshuffled and reshuffled and reshuffled again. Over that process, we are going to be reducing a whole bunch of NAD to NADH. Here, NAD to NADH. We're going to generate a little bit of energy by adding a phosphate group to ATP, to make ATP. We're going to reshuffle again, reduce FAD to FADH2. We're gonna reshuffle again to, make, to reduce NAD to NADH. So really the whole goal here is we want to generate a whole bunch of reduced compounds. We wanna get a whole bunch of those hydrogens because then we're gonna use those hydrogens in the next step to actually synthesize some ATP.